So we're going to start with the, the new reading, which is Strategies for Economic Development by Amitava Datta. So here he is given several debates that what strategy should be picked up for the development, particularly in, in LDCs, right? And we're going to look at the first debate today, which is state versus market. So I'll just give you a brief overview. We will look at when was the time when state-led development was favored a lot? When was the time when the market-led development was favored? Right. Then what are the arguments in favor of the state-led development? What are the arguments in favor of free markets? What are the evidences which are given as success, uh, as, as the success stories for, for state-led development? What are the evidences which are given as success stories for free markets? And then what is uh, how, how Mitava Datta, he ends up this debate. He says that it is not the debate between state versus market. You cannot just have one. You need to have both. You need to have Synergy between state and market both. Let us have a look at it. So there was a time when state-led development was favored and there was a time when market-led development was favored. So look at the time after 1945 when World War II ended. Right, That was a time when the state intervention was very essential. Government intervention was essential. We cannot expect economies to grow without the help of the government, just on the basis of the private sector. No, right. And uh, state-led development was much inspired by Soviet-style industrialization. It was a successful model at that time, right. So that model favored the state-led development. Other thing is, in many of the LDCs, government intervention was required. Government helped in promoting development through various channels. How? Through public ownership. Public ownership means ownership of the government, uh, of the essential sectors of the economy. Through regulation. Here also, government intervention is there through planning, through foreign aid. So in all the ways, it was government intervention was there. Government was looking at what is the path of the development which the country had to follow. All of that was true in the period of 50s, 60s and all, right? Then came the period of 1980s to 90s. This was a period of neoliberal policies. Neoliberal policies means market-led policies. Let markets decide. Hatcher in UK and Reagan in US, uh, those governments, they also promoted market-led policies a lot, neoliberal policies a lot. Till that time, India also had a state-led development. Till 1980s, public sector was very dominant in India. So it was a state-led development, but 1991, India also liberalized. There was a dismantling of license Raj. Uh, there was deregulation. Privatization came. All of that. So all of this was done on the basis of what? On the basis of market-led development. And markets were seen as efficient because they were promoting competition. After 91, what happened? It is not that there is one public sector with whom nobody can compete and let that public sector be as inefficient as it could be. But even then it is going to survive. No, nothing like that. If you do not be efficient, you will be out of the market. So market-led development was what was required at that time and it was done. It was given. Uh, through market-led development, property rights were also ensured. So these were the times when market-led development was favored and there were the times when the state-led development was favored. Now we will talk about what are the arguments which are given for the state-led development and the arguments which are given for the market-led development. So there are people who believe that it is the state-led development which can lead to development in LDCs. 
so they base on they base uh, uh, their argument on this that whatever the, whatever conditions or assumptions which are required for welfare economics right they are rarely going to hold in any country particularly for ldcs so i mean for 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 sulfur theorem to hold you do not want uh, imperfect information in ldcs there is imperfect information for for sulfur theorem to hold you do not need externalities public goods there are externalities in public goods for welfare theorem to hold you do not need monopolies there are monopolies in uh, in ldcs so given all this if you leave everything to the market you cannot have uh, you cannot have a proper all round development so they say that here state had to intervene state had the power in ldcs which can correct unemployment in case if there is unemployment state can increase the government expenditure it can increase employment unemployment would be corrected state had the power to reduce inflation it can reduce money supply let's say state had the power to correct fluctuations in case if there is boom or if there is recession state can take up the help of fiscal policy or monetary policy and get uh get the economy on the corrected path right state had the power to stabilize the economy in whichever way so either there would be fluctuations output fluctuations in terms of boom or recession or there would be inflation or there is unemployment state can do whatever it can markets are not ready for all that markets do not want any intervention private sector is only worried about their own profits they are not worried about how economy is moving they cannot think long they cannot think long term they can only think what is their next profit from where their next profit is coming right and what is also being said is that if you allow state to function properly then state can take up steps to reduce inequality can expand human capabilities in terms of health in terms of education now having said all this you know that till 1980s we had state led development only so i mean was it the case that we didn't have unemployment no was it the case that uh, uh, there was complete stabilization in economy no in fact uh, uh, we had to give up our state led development and giving the way to the markets in 1991 because of uh, uh, because of uh, uh, very high fluctuations in the economy in terms of bop crisis so i mean you can't say that state led development is also one of the answer if market led development is not the answer then state led development only state led development is also not the answer in fact state led development can also lead to the favoritism it can lead to corruption it can lead to power to elites so it it is not coming without its, without its own problem and then on the other side there are people who believe that only free market should be given complete hand free hand so it is coming from invisible hand adam smith's concept so it is the market forces which is going to decide the efficient allocation of resources so in case if you have enough demand there will be resources which will be allocated and things will be produced to satisfy that demand right uh, so i mean it is being said that market is going to encourage competition because of that efficiency is going to increase productivity is going to increase it is being said that private agents are going to use the information better than the state it is not state it is state right it is not state it is state and uh, and it also expands economic freedoms in terms of uh, property rights so there are people who believe in free markets there are people who believe in state led development and there are evidences also there are evidences in terms of that there are cases when state led development has been highly successful and there are cases when free markets are highly successful let us look at them so as far as the evidence for the success of state led development is concerned 
you look at western europe and us although they are market led economies but even there there is a state intervention and a very central role which is played by state intervention for their success in india and china also you look at the growth of these countries but do you really think that growth would have been uh, would have been at this level if state would not have helped initially in terms of building up the industrial base in giving uh, economic reforms no so without state intervention can you imagine the way the countries are growing no and then there are uh, people who say no free led market is is very successful how you look at the success of the capitalist economy and then they say just look at soviet union it, it collapsed in in 1989 so i mean that is itself of an evidence against the central planning so you should allow only markets to to lead but you know what amitava datta rightly say this entire debate is wrong between state led development and free market you need to have a synergy between both of them one cannot have one cannot live without the other you need to have a synergy between both of them and this is the way we are going to write so amitava datta <clears throat> tells this that this debate between state versus market is wrongly framed they are not against each other one requires the other markets and state they are complementary to each other state cannot function without markets markets also cannot function without states and if you just if you just focus on state there will be problems if you just focus on markets there will also be problems development is going to require some kind of synergy synergy between state and markets you require markets for efficiency states are going to give you an efficient outcome but markets can give you give, can give you efficient outcome but markets are not so much concerned about stability they are not concerned about equity they are not concerned about long term transformation for all that you require state right so the first debate about how uh, what kind of strategy should be taken up for uh, for the development in the ldcs is that you, re you require both state and markets right i hope it was useful to you thank you beta